you know, we're going to be taking a look at a sample file of how to use one of the QuickBooks or Intuit uh, payroll services. So in this case, we are taking a sample file of the basic payroll services. So again, this is a sample file, so free of charge. No, um, However, we're going to take a look at how um, to process payroll, especially uh, when you already have a payroll service. So as I've mentioned before in the last class, oftentimes when you have employees, you're probably better off paying a payroll service or outsourcing it to another payroll services. Um, just because yesterday we also got to take a look of entering the information and having to do a manual payroll system. Um, now, as far as smaller businesses, right, if you're a startup or a sole proprietor type of ordeal, you can get away with doing manual payroll just because your only bare minimum is to just calculate your federal taxes, which those ones are pretty set. They're straightforward. You can you can uh, obtain the tables online and you can set forth and um, be able to calculate those ones because they're already set. Okay, so we talked about FICA, which is your federal income. Con I'm sorry, federal insurance contribution act. Right, it's where you you um, place money or you put money into your Social Security and Medicare. Those are federal. So those are mandated. Now, state, it depends on what state you belong to. But luckily, you belong to Nevada, so you don't need to worry about state taxes. However, again, if you're the one that is, as a small company, if you have, uh, I believe the rule is if it's less than 20 uh, employees, then yes, you could do manual payroll. It's a lot more cheaper Although it takes up a lot of time because you have to go through each individual's W-4 forms. And so you could um, file their um, FITW, which is the Federal Income Tax Withholdings. But, you know, um, once again, if you're too small of a company, you're better off doing manual. But we've seen before, it's not the easiest and not the quickest thing. Uh, however, they do recommend to... Uh, to either outsource or pay for some kind of payroll services. And here we get to look at a sample file of that exact payroll service that Intuit offers. So here we're taking a glimpse of how the payroll process is so much more easier when you actually pay for a service. So once again, those are the, the uh, if you guys remember, there are three of the payroll services. We got basic, we got enhanced, and we uh, for 2018, it's full service, right? So once you open up the file, okay, so we're doing PR process uh, processing. You're going to get this window here that says, this is a sample file. So that means we can't use it to go beyond fourth, right? We would have to just... Uh, take a look at it and, um, you know, we would just, um, this is just a sample file. So you can only go, I think, the, I think for the payrolls for a cup for just only maybe two times, but that's pretty much it. You can't use this file anywhere else. You can't use it for your own business just because, um, once again, depending on what file it is, it's the 2018. So therefore all the tax tables that it's looking at is probably going to be from 2018. Um, so usually what they usually say is uh, when you do your um, payroll uh, process or even before you do that, you know, normal thing that you should do is be sure that you are using the correct table for the correct years. So again, this is more crucial, especially when you're doing payroll during January and February months. Uh, usually, um, the IRS, they change their taxes by November. So at least December, you could at least prepare for it. But once again, I showed you guys this yesterday. Um, this is called the publication, the, uh, publication 15 T, which is the tax tables. And it, this is for the 2021. Now, of course, depending on, well, once again, depending on 
which year you guys are looking at. So, for example, uh, you guys will be looking at the 2018 version. I'm looking at the 2019 version. Uh, but if you've downloaded the uh, 2021 uh, trial version, then you're obviously going to be looking at 2021. You can obtain any year um, for these. But again, if you are looking into opening your business, then you might be looking for the newer types of tax tables. But that's always rule of thumb is making sure that you get the most up-to-date tax table of that very current year before you do payroll at all. Okay, so here um, is go we're going to be uh, taking a look at the very, 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 very first um, table because that one is for automated payroll system. So once again, because we're looking at a, an automated payroll system, a system that does the calculations for you, you want to make sure that these tax tables are the ones that you're using. Okay, right here. And again, it just depends on which criteria, what pay period, what filing status they belong to. And here are the um, different uh, tax tables. So once again, if you're doing an automated system, you are for surely doing percentage method. You're not going to be doing, um, uh, what do you call it? You're not going to ever use bracket method to do, um, to do calculate it because... Those are all for manual. From here, from the every table after that, so there's a total of like six or seven, eight tables. All of those are going to be manual except for the very first one, which is the percentage method, and this is for automated services, okay? And then once again, they give you for all types of forms, whether you applied for the 2019 and prior or you did the 2020 and later, okay? So again... That's the first thing that you have to do when you are making sure that you are doing your payroll is are you using the correct tables? And once again, because QuickBooks, when it recognizes that you're using a payroll system, they're going to be getting these numbers off of the IRS as well, okay? Because once again, QuickBooks is always connected to the internet and especially if you pay for payroll services, you definitely want to ensure that they are um, using you are updating them to the correct uh, tax tables. Okay? That's the first one there. Okay, um, and of course, here are a few things that you also have to do as the payroll person or um, HR. You always need to make sure and check and double check all the time, especially if you're running your payroll because. It depends on what kind of payroll period you do um, set up. So if you're uh, if you pay your employees on a daily basis or pay them on a weekly, bi-weekly, whatever it is, you need to make sure that um, every time you submit your form or uh, you submit your timesheet and you're entering them into QuickBooks, you need to make sure that this is accurate because. Oftentimes, then, oh, and if you've read throughout the entire um, chapter for chapter 11, they will always flag you and say, make sure this is the most accurate timesheet because making adjustments can be damaging to uh, the federal uh, taxes as well as um, just QuickBooks in general, okay? So they always want to make sure that you... Try your best to not void your checks and make sure that if you do print them out that they are correct and there is no adjustments that needs to be made. However, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. They do say that you can do it no matter what. However, the rule is you should try your best not to produce those, you know, um, inaccurate paychecks, okay? Because it will mess up all of the calculations for the federal and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, but there's also a few check rules that you have, checklist things that you have to make sure that you do consistently as well. So here are um, little four sections that you could take a look at. Uh, yeah, four sections. 
Um, that kind of gives you like a little guideline. What do you need to do every pay period? Okay, so once again, make sure you review um, your previous payroll stuff. Okay, because you just want to make sure that everything looks good and that all the taxes went through. Okay, um, verify that your tax tables are correct and current. Right, I've mentioned that already. Okay, um, also create um, or create review and. Uh, cor uh, correct any, if necessary, any er any paychecks um, or any errors. So, again, preventative measures, right? Okay, so that's every pay period. And then you also have to do something that you need to do for every uh, every time you make your pay uh, payroll liabilities and you pay them off, you make payments to the government, that you properly file them away, okay? So, once again... We talked about the Form 940 and the Form 941. Those are, those ones are for filing um, federal taxes, okay? And again, you have to do it every quarterly and also every year as well because the big deal here is that every time you create your paycheck, you need to make sure that you properly take the proper um, federal taxes and make the payments, especially if you schedule your payments to be done every quarterly. Run your reports because, once again, if you run them, that way you're more likely to um, see them a lot better. So, once again, um, this is something that HR you know, is probably the most complicated position that you can have as a um, as a, a worker, an employee, okay? Um, that's why it's but you're better off instead of having to calculate all this stuff, you're probably more better off um, having the payroll service do it for you, okay? And of course, every year you need to run those W-2 forms, uh, W-2 um, tax forms, uh, forms for your employees. So definitely something you need to consider. Okay. All right. So using the employee center. So we've seen the employee center before, right? Any way to get there is the same three ways that you get to any other center, right? You have the homepage on the tab right here for uh, employees. You have the icon bar, employees, and you have the menu bar, employees, and it should be the very, very first one that you see, okay? So employees, first one, employee center. So because I'm using the payroll services, this is where I want you guys to see the difference. So we got to take a look at this yesterday. Yesterday, okay? Uh, so let me, there you go. Let me make this a little wider. So here we have two employees. Now notice this. We have an additional tab called the payroll center. So if I click on that, this is the payroll scheduler right here. Okay. <laughs> this section right here is your payroll scheduler. Okay. Once again, um, like I said, I thought it was odd that they taught it you in chapter 10 when the payroll scheduler is meant for um, your for chapter 11 when you actually have access to the payroll service. So here it shows you, it tells you who you have to pay or uh, a pay period is coming up. So if you have your employees on different pay periods, so let's say you pay your salary-based employees um, twice uh, a month, so on the 15th and the 30th, while you pay your regular hourly workers um, every two weeks, okay? So they could be on a bi-weekly schedule. This is what this payroll scheduler is going to help you do. It helps you figure out which employees that you have to pay, all right? And that's what it is by setting up what the pay frequency is and, it went, and also... Um, there you go. It lets you schedule it right here by saying, okay, well, this paycheck is, is due this day. This paycheck is due this way. So once again, we're going to take a look at how to um, pay our employees. But look at this. So it gives us, you know, a little calendar so we could make, you know, um, projections, of course. Again, um, this does uh, 
it is retrospective so or retroactive so in this case right here it shows you that this is for the 2019 okay uh, which is fine because this is the sample file now once again this is the payroll center and it comes with the employee center so that's one way that you can access it as well and um, if you do that so once again if you do uh, use the employee center to get to the payroll center that's one way of going but you could also when you when you register for that service that payroll that paid subscription right it should automatically be here the payroll center is here okay and again it's going to appear on your employees center as well you're going to have the option to access your payroll center there okay but yes so here if i click on payroll center it takes me straight to the employee center but it flips on the tab right here in the payroll center okay and of course the payroll center has three main tabs you have your pay employees your pay liabilities and to file forms okay now, once again, it depends on which kind of service that you have, because if you go for the basic, your only two for only two tabs that you actually have available is to pay your employees and pay liabilities. Right. But notice this. If I click on uh, um, uh, file forms, it's going to give me an error message saying, hey, I hope you know that you need to download a um a more enhanced or a uh, the other payroll services to have access to this and you're gonna click OK but once again we'll talk about each tab um, throughout chapter 11 okay but our main focus is just paying our employees and paying our liabilities okay so once again the payroll center looks like this and you have three tabs pay your employees pay your liabilities and file your forms right and guess what those three transactions are down here below on your employee little section of the home page you have your pay employees pay liabilities and then file your forms okay once again if you could do all of this transaction here on the home page all of that on the payroll center you are more than likely to be able to do that on your um, menu bar as well. You can pay your employees right here. You can pay your liabilities, okay? So here, payroll tax liabilities, you can pay them, okay? Um, and again, you can file your uh, tax forms, right? So pretty much you could do everything. Um, if you could do everything, so I just showed you, showed you the three ways to be able to enter in the payroll center, right? Homepage. Uh, I'm sorry, there's only two. Uh, just because the icon bar, you have to set that. The payroll center doesn't come with it automatically. You have to set that up. Um, so once again, by default, it's going to be a um, menu bar. Okay. Employee set, uh, I mean, um, payroll center. You can do the payroll center through the homepage. Right, or you could go through the employee center, which essentially is the payroll center. Okay, and of course, every transaction you also going to be doing those the exact same way, right? Either do the home page, the menu bar, or through the center itself. There's only that many ways. Okay, very very short, sweet, not too complicated, uh, but yes. Okay, and then notice this: I'm not using any tracking system or any time. Okay. So if you use time, yes, you can go ahead and um, it's going to pull that information for you. So if you, you can enter all your time and the minute you click pay employees, it's going to pull the information from the timesheet and it's going to transfer over right immediately. But in this case, these are already set already in there in stone. Um, so there's no need to transfer a timesheet. But... If you do are uh, planning to use a timesheet for your hourly workers, then it will automatically pick it up by picking up the name. And when you pay your employees, it, that's exactly what it does. It's going to associate it uh, with their uh, appropriate timesheet for that pay, pay week. Okay. 
All right, so that's the employee center. So once again, it looks just like every other center, right? You got your list of your employees on the left here. You have your um, information at the top of the right corner. And then of course, at the very bottom of it gives you a list of all the paychecks that you've written to this uh, particular employee. That's all the transactions you're gonna have with an employee, right? This one allows you to look at their paycheck and properly file their year-to-date information. So that's why that's one of the most important things is that you're gonna notice that as you can see, uh, each person has um, a, uh, a trail and this is definitely that something that's gonna be collected as information and that's what you're going to uh, put on your pay stub, right? You need to have the year-to-date information so that when they do file for their taxes, right, when you provide them your their employees, your W-2 forms to them, they can use that, right, because it has all their year-to-date of all the taxes that they're supposed to have been paying into and giving them the information, okay? So, yep, that's all the transactions that you're going to have with an employee. So, it's not as extensive as the vendors or your customers. This one, you only have a paycheck. Okay. All right. So, now let's go ahead and we already took a look at the payroll center. So, again, the tax tables, you can find that um, at irs.gov. And then when you search it up, you write publication 15 with a letter T. Okay, so um, so the IRS has been changing their forms as well. Uh, the other couple of times it used to be just only strictly publication 15. Now it's 15T. So if you're intentionally looking for it, make sure you're looking at the right place, okay? Um, best rule of thing is make sure that you are getting it from irs.gov because once again, um, if you Google it, you could get fixated numbers or numbers that don't look right. Okay, um, So make sure that you obtain it from there. All right. So first things first is how do you pay your employees? Okay. So once again, However way that you get to the payroll center or if you choose to pay your employees on the homepage or using the menu bar, it's you're going to be getting to this page right here, okay? You don't go straight to the pay employees window. Actually, you do. Uh, but once again, um, if you are looking to pay your employees, you simply just go to your payroll center and you can click on pay employees. Pretty straightforward, right? And then what you're going to do is uh, this little thing right here that says schedule uh, or slash pay is what you're going to be clicking on. So that is one way that you could click on to be able to successfully start paying your employees. But once again, if I go on the home page, it's going to take me directly to that pay window, right? Just like we saw yesterday, right? It's going to take you here. And then you click on the view pay schedule slash pay your employees. So this is the window I was talking about. Okay. So once again, it's going to give you the options to set your payroll stuff. So you want to set the date that the payroll period ended on. When is the check available for your um, employees to pick up? Okay. Or when they can they cash out their checks? So once again, usually um, when you do payroll, it's usually a couple of days before um, that you uh, set. Now, most cases, like I said, um, when you're doing salary types of payroll, they're pretty straightforward, right? All you need to do is enter in their hours, but they're going to be receiving the same paycheck every single time, okay? Um, so those could be done the day, the, the, the last day that you end, right, on the 15th. That could be done almost instantly, and you can have the check readily available for the 16th. Now, for those who are on a bi-weekly payroll, right, usually um, you submit your timesheets for the two weeks that you've worked, and then uh, from there, you have like a time gap in between, right? Usually, um, 
bi-weekly, you could get paid on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Usually, it's always Friday, right? Got paid on Friday night. So, um, yes, usually that case, it takes a little longer to process the payroll just because of that. And you want to make the date a couple days out. So, usually, um, for bi-weeklies, they're, they won't be able to pick up their paycheck until that Friday and the, the check won't be available until that Friday. So, um, yes. So you want to make sure that you toggle these because it's very important that you don't set a date that is it that you don't want to set out. So in this case, we're verifying that it is the end of um, the pay period is going to be December 15, 2019. So again, this is a semi-monthly type of paycheck where they get it every 15 or every six. Well, they get they do it every 15 in the end of the month, right? That's their paycheck. So here we want to just make sure that it they can pick it up the very next day, which is the 16th. Okay. Once again, here's also going to give you a total of how many employees are you going to be making a payment to. Okay. And again, um, it's also, you want to make sure that it comes out of your checking account um, and making sure that you have enough money. So in this case, I have $82,000. I have plenty enough money to pay for my employees. So if you guys read the book, they do recommend you, okay? As a company, you want to set aside money because once again, your priority is to make sure that you cover to pay your impo the, your employees. That's your number one priority. Every other bill, right? You can always extend it, pay late fees to it. But the one thing that you have to always be aware of is that if you have employees that work for you, whether you pay them daily, weekly, bi-weekly, you have to pay them. So make sure that you, if you are um, considering that, create a separate checking account just for payroll only. So um, if you know that your payroll could be, um, you have two people, right? In this case, it's roughly $5,000. If you can set aside $5,000 twice a month, right? Then you can always have deposit that money ahead of time. So you can always make sure that you have enough money to cover your employees. Because once again, if you tell them, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't pay you this week. They'll get mad, all right? Especially, um, it's like it's like you're a huge company, um, and you're paying all these other bills, right? Other responsibilities. But I worked. I deserve the money because I came here to work. And you're telling me that you can't pay me? Yes. So if you ever come to that conclusion, you know it's kind of like, well, is this company really doing well? If they can't afford to pay you, okay. So that's just um, something that um, it's just something that the book recommends that you should create a separate checking account for payroll. Okay. And again, you have a few options here. Okay. So it says right here, um, check um, options. So you want to um, print the pay um, checks on check um, stock, obviously, right? It's a specific type of paper that you have to get from the bank. Um, and some printers, believe it or not, um, for especially when you're printing on these treasury types of forms, they may require a special type of ink, okay? Now, that's only if you choose to, if you're working at the office, that's if you choose to make these, uh, if you choose to print your paychecks or even print checks in general, which um, is allowed. No one says that you can't. That's why... Um, Intuit offers you, would you like for us to, uh, uh, would you like to purchase checks from Intuit? And they'll send you the stock paper. Or they could actually, well, you will always get the um, actual physical check from the bank itself. But Intuit offers to, um, to for you to uh, purchase the actual check stock paper um from into it themselves, so you can print them out, okay? Now, once again, uh, any printer will work. However, the only idea is that you may or may not have to have that special ink 
Um, but for sure, the paper has to be that special holographic, legitimate treasury type of um, paper. Can't be, can't be regular printer paper. Okay. Now again, we'll talk about the options when you can print them. Um, so once again, once you've gone through just those options, next thing that you have here is the two employees that you are planning to pay. Okay. So in this case, um, you can choose which one to pay. You don't have to pay them both. You can pay whoever you like, but in this case, you should pay them at the same time. So they're checked marked like that. So how we adjust their time or actually physically pay them is we got to make sure that their times are accurate. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one, Katie Reynolds. Okay, so once again, it pops up this little window here, which allows us to adjust their time accordingly. Now, once again, um, she's a salary based. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many hours she worked. But in this case, let's say she worked 85. Okay, let's say she worked 85 hours. Okay, and but she's still salary. So at this point, it doesn't matter what she does because it doesn't matter how many hours she works because she's going to get a flat rate or the same paycheck every single time because she's not based on an hour. But however, that just keeps us track. That just helps us keep, keep keep track of her. Okay. So once again, when we come here, right? It's autumn. It's 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 going to be always two thousand five hundred, right? They this QuickBooks found this out by um, us by because we enter in that she's a salary based um, worker that we entered in her um, how much she earns per year. We said that she earns $60,000 and we also um, indicated that we pay her every two, uh, two, two paychecks per month. So therefore, you know, they QuickBooks, they already did the work for you. They took 60,000 and divided by the number of paychecks, which is 24 which is how they conclude to 2,500 pay, um, per paycheck, okay? Now that we have this, look at this table over here. It automatically calculated everything for you, right? Once again, these were payroll items that we set in the system. We set that um, uh, the 401k um deduction that they can put in is up to 4% of their paycheck um, and we match them 2% and again medical is automatically taken at $100 because that's what we set for the payroll items okay and let's look over here so this is what is been tallied notice this federal withholding with holdings it's already pre-calculated right because we entered a few information remember remember the w4 form okay the piece of information throughout the um, the interview, we said that she's a married individual and that she has claiming two dependent children or whatever. Two, she has two withholdings. Okay. So once again, we just need to verify um, these numbers are correct by, you know, simply taking our calculator, right? Um, and just doing, you know, like a quick um, overview, okay? But once again, all of these should be pretty accurate as far as calculations. There's no, you don't need to go through everybody's calculations. If you could just do, go through one, then you could guarantee that they're using the right, um, the right uh, tax table. So in this case, here it is, right? If not, you would have to go to the payroll system and actually update it um, online by going to the IRS.gov. But in this case... It does the calculation for you, right? If you guys remember yesterday, right, we had to physically manually calculate it in ourselves. In this case, it's done the work for you. And it even does, it even calculated the California taxes, right? And it even calculated your taxes that you have to pay for having um, Katie as an employee. Automatically, right, here is the... Um, California tax that we're obligated to pay, as well as Social Security, Medicare, and federal unemployment. So in this case, um, in the state of California, I guess there isn't any under there isn't any unemployment. Okay, so okay, so that's what she looks like. So once again, as a salary-based earning person, 
she can claim whatever hours she'd like. So in this case, I believe the example here is she doesn't only claim salary regular, she also claimed salary vacation, right? She, I believe she did three hours, okay, of vacation. Now notice this. It's going to calculate it automatically for you because at the end of the day, her paycheck should equal to 2500 okay? If it's reflecting different, then you can adjust it, obviously, by um, calculating it, right, uh, or typing it in. Okay, so if, if she does or if this isn't reflecting how it should be, then you can manually type it in um, to resort in whatever um, number that you're trying to get to. So here, right, I recognize that she worked 85 hours. However, she claimed three hours of vacation hours. So once again, this is going to go all, uh, the way that we set it up. If we set up our vacation and sick pay, it's going to automatically calculate, right? Saying, okay, she has this many um, hours left to claim. Now, um, yeah, but once again, since she is a salary-based uh, person, it doesn't really matter when she works or when she claims her vacation because it's all going to be the same. She's still going to get paid no matter what. Okay. And once again, like I said, Calculations are all done for you. You don't have to do anything but just enter in the uh, employee's information. Just take a quick glance of all the numbers, right? And then you can go ahead and go move on to the next um, employee. So here, this is Mike. Remember, he is an hourly regular person. So here, he has to claim X amount of hours, right? So in this case, the example is that he claimed a full um, full 80-hour week period, right? He worked five days a week, eight hours, and 40 um, hours per week. And here for um, within that, those first 15 days, he's um, he accumulated all 80 hours. Once again, it's multiplied by the $24, so it gives you automatically calculating at $920. Okay. And of course, all his taxes that he is mandated to do. Okay. Therefore, um, that is all of the information. And then we can go ahead and click um, save and close. Okay. So once you've verified that this information is correct, right, you can see right here that it kind of gives you an overlay here of um, what is there. So again, um, hourly gets she did 80 hours and then salary did 85 okay and then three hours vacation and it gives you the total hours here okay you can also adjust them right here if you want to instead of having going to them individually but you know it's definitely you would definitely want to go through the individual just so that you can make sure that they file the ta they the taxes are there and that they're calculated correctly so then I'm going to click um, continue. And then this one gives you a verification of all the taxes that are pay are that are being taken out from their paycheck. And that when, at the end of the day, um, you will be paying them X amount of dollars. Okay. So in this case, you're going to be paying um, net pay to Katie 18. And then you're going to be paying uh, Mike um, 11.37.81, okay? So that's just figuring it out like that, okay? And once you've verified this and all the check information is all good, then you're going to go ahead and click on Create Paycheck, okay? Now, here's the thing here. Here's the catch. Once you verify the check has gone through, you can't undo it, okay? You can void it, but once again, they recommend you not to void any checks at all, okay? So once again, make sure that you are for sure that you double verify as many times as you'd like to, guarantee, to make sure that the um, information that you've entered in is correct and accurate. They, rec they highly recommend you that you need to make 
minimal mistakes on paychecks because those are the harder ones to modify and to fix. Okay. Once you've done that, then you have two options. You can either pay your paychecks or you can even print out, I'm sorry, print out your paychecks or print out your pay stubs. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on um, print paychecks, right? And here they appear. Once again, if you don't see this window or for you, you just click close, right? Um, you can always find the print uh, paychecks by going up to the corner here. This For paychecks, you have to go up here. You have to go up to file and you have to go to print forms, okay? And you have to go to paychecks, okay? So once you don't, once you leave that window, your only option is to go through here, okay? Because the other one on the home page, that's for printing checks in general. Checks and paychecks are two separate things, okay? So that's the only way that you can do it here, and you well, you can obviously do it on the home page as well. I mean, on the um, payroll center as well. You can print the paychecks here, but. Um, the more obvious, obvious ones are going to be going to file forms or print forms um, and then click on uh, pay checks. Okay. So once again, um, now that I verified that, now my transaction says that I've or it's being ready to print or they're, it, they're being to printed. Okay. Um, and of course, the next payroll is already up. That means the next time I pay them is not until January um, January 1st, okay? Or also known as December 31st paycheck. It's not next, it's not available until the 1st of January, okay? So once again, this payroll process is so easy. All you have to do is click verify that the um, information that uh, like they claim, the hours have to claim, okay? And that's it. Everything is done for you. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at printing those checks right now. Okay. So here it is, paychecks. Okay. Once again, you're going to visit that the, you have two checks here, right? One for Katie and one for Mike. Um, and you can, um, uh, you can assign the check numbers. So they're going to be 6,059. Um, or 6,069, excuse me, um, that's the starting here. And again, you could choose which one you want to print, okay? And if you don't want to print any of them, that's fine. You can leave it into the print. You can just leave it there. But, of course, we want to make sure we pay our employees. So I selected them, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So this is where we're going to format the actual paycheck itself. So we've seen this window before, right, when we wrote checks out. You are obligated to have a few things, right? You need to always have a signature, right? So if you print this without the signature, right? Because you can't do a digital copy of a signature. You're going to have to chase down your boss and actually have them physically sign it. Now, of course, we've talked about this, right? You can click on the signature um, little window here and you can print that signature, right? If you have a tablet or a pen, um, you can actually just, you know, draw it in here. But, of course, I don't have that, so it won't let me do it. So what it's going to let me do is I can attach a digital copy, which we've seen before, right? It's going to be located in your um, portable files. Okay, so I'm going to go to here, QuickBooks, um, portable files, and this one. And it's going to be um, the signature, okay? And then you're gonna click that OK, and there it looks. Okay, Vern Black was our uh, was our boss, and that's what we remembered, right? That's his signature. We're gonna click OK, and that means when you print out your checks, it's gonna uh, populate that um, printed signature. Okay. So then we talked about the different types of um, styles of checks, right? First one is voucher style. This one is highly recommended because with voucher style, right, it prints the pay stub at the very top and the very bottom part is the perforated check that you sign. This 
is the most common one that everyone uses because it allows you to send the information to your employee um, uh, and let them know this is your this is what the taxes were this is how many hours you earned this is your pay rate etc cetera, etc cetera. this is your year to date information okay so again pay subs has a lot a lot of information on there um, that pretty much um, once again it, it gives you an overview of um, every paycheck that you earned <coughs> uh, excuse me <coughs> So once again, voucher style is recommended when printing paychecks. However, a lot of companies too, they want to save money on the uh, pay stubs itself or the paychecks itself. So they they typically could ugh, they typically can use other ones such as staggered, okay, where they can print multiple paychecks in one, and what they do is they uh, print out the paper copy of their uh, pay stubs and then they just attach um, the paycheck right there okay so again that could be just depends on what your company likes to do now once again it's just much easier if you can just print one uh, paycheck per person and go but once again it just depends on what uh, if they're printing it themselves the cost that it costs to print them out, whatever it is, um, is going to be, um, it's going to be up to the company's discretion. Okay. And of course, we talked about um, wallet style. So wallet style, again, it's like the actual legitimate small um, uh, check form, like the actual, um, the one that you get from the bank, right? It's that small one. Okay. And you can use that as well. Right, but most cases you're better off you doing voucher style. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this in uh, our documents or our um, QuickBooks uh, folder. So let me see. We'll go to documents. Um, LVP to accounting QuickBooks class portable files and here we are QuickBooks 426 and, and I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and I'm going to say um, PR so payroll 12 um, 16 uh, paychecks okay and I'm going to go ahead and click save so I'm doing a digital print Okay. And then it verifies it to you and it says, well, what do you want to do next? Okay. And then we're going to say, these are the checks that you printed and I'm going to click OK. So now that we've printed our paychecks, right? And then we can notice that if we go to our check register, okay. So make sure that you're in the correct um, account. So I want to go to checking. I click OK and you're going to see this now that you printed a pay check, not just a regular check, but a pay check. OK, all right. Uh, and that's it. And you can double click on them just to view the paycheck that you printed out. OK, so everything looks good. Right. And you can even view the information um, by clicking um Paycheck details. Okay. So that is what happens when you print out a paycheck. It shows up automatically and it's taken away from your amount. So you started out with six, with 82. Now you're down to 79. So it automatically updates for you. All right. So any questions on how to pay your employees and print the checks? Okay, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Once again, your only job to do is just verify the, uh, the, the, the information and then it does everything for you, okay? Now, after you print out your paycheck, right? Oftentimes that your employee can do is they can ask you at any given time 
if they need a copy of their pay stubs, okay? So pay stubs can always be printed out, right? If you noticed, right, when I went ahead and um, click on that fi the file and print forms, right below it is pay stubs, okay? You can always issue pay stubs at any given time, no matter what, because if your um, if your employee needs a copy of it for any reason, right? They maybe they need to submit it to Social Security, submit it to the IRS, whatever it is, right? They can request it from you anytime, and you should be able to produce it anytime uh, for any paycheck that they that you've that you've written out to them. Okay, so they can obtain all of them if they like. They can obtain a particular one. You just need to make sure that you um are uh, verifying that you are picking the correct date, of course, right? So in this case, um, the paycheck, the, the um, check date. So um, if it was for the, uh, for just recently, right? Here you go. Here is uh, Mike and Katie's, um, you know, information right here. Um, once again, and uh, yeah, you can... Uh, print them at any time. Here, let's take a preview. Okay, so this is what the pay stub looks like, right? Pretty standard, right? Their name, their information, right? Their um, their their information. Obviously, their social security is on there too, so you know, ignore that. Uh, but yes, they have the the hours that they worked. The what if it they're a pay rate? Then they'll get a pay rate. Uh, but in this case, she's salary, right? Here it says that, okay, well, she earned salary uh, regular, but she also earned um, vacation hours. So here it is, um, claimed 85 hours and three hours of vacation. But here you go, it calculates it for you here, and it gives you the year-to-date taxes information or year-to-date payments, okay? It lists all the federal, <clears throat> sorry, all the taxes that, she's subject to have to pay towards, as well as um, any deduction, so any Medicare, um, medical insurance, 401k plans, those are all deductions to the paycheck. It's all listed here, okay? Pretty straightforward, and you got Mike's as well, okay? And they give you the total amount that um, they should be earning from you. And that's pretty much it. You can print this at any given time on command of whenever the um, employee w needs it or et cetera. Or maybe you can print this out for your records, right? If you need to keep track of um, all that information, right? You, they're all on QuickBooks, right? You could pull up any um, any date of your paychecks as long as you are in within the given time period, right? And you could keep it as a physical record, right? Especially when you want to make a copy, a dig, uh, you can have a digital copy or you can create a physical copy to set aside. So when you do file your own taxes and you file for the 940 and the 941, you can actually verify that this amount is accurate. Okay. So again, printing pay stubs is pretty straightforward. It's easy. Okay. All right. Any questions there? Okay. Any questions? Nope. Okay. All right. So the next section I'm going to talk to you about is editing paychecks. Okay. For any reason that your employee comes up to you and says they need a new paycheck or something's wrong with their paycheck or um, I forgot to report this on my paycheck. Et cetera, et cetera, right? This is the part where um, QuickBooks always flags you and says, hey, you, they, best recommendation, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't void a check at any reasons because it's going to um, throw your account uh, balance off, especially when the payroll system that you use, right, um, is, it, you can't, in other words, that once you print out a check, um, the general rule of thumb is they recommend you to, to avoid 
reprinting for any reason or reissuing another check. Now, of course, we live in, uh, you know, reality where employees, they lose their paycheck, right? They call the boss, they call up the company and says, I'm sorry, I lost my paycheck. It got stolen. Um, I misplaced it for whatever reason. And you have to be subject to reprint another paycheck. And you know what? It happens. And there are rules and ways that you can do it. Now, again, this is more extensive in regards to what your proper, uh, what you should properly do. Um, so uh, let's see. For this example, if I click on my pay employees, right? Or actually, let's take a look at the paycheck itself. So we talked about going to the check register, right? Um, and let's say, okay, you've already printed the, you've already printed the paycheck. It's done, it's been sent, they, it's in their hands, and then Katie decides to call you and say, I'm so sorry, I lost my paycheck, my purse was stolen, my backpack was stolen, I don't know. Whatever reasons I tell you, can I please be printed a new one, right? So what you're gonna do here is there are a few ways that you can edit the information, or in this case, I'm gonna show you how to reprint one or reissue a new one. So when you find, you can, uh, you have a couple ways that you could do it. You can either locate the actual check that you've written out, right? Her check number, you want to make sure that you have this information, that her check number was 6069. And it was for um, uh, $1,814 um, and 53 cents, okay? So they say the rule here is, if you want to choose to reprint this, you can um, go up to the top of the window, click on that to be printed later or print later, right? If you click on this, the check gets removed, okay? And if I click on that and I click save and close, right? And it tells us that you've made changes to this check. You say yes. You get that beep of approval, right? And if I go to my file once again and I click that print um, forms and I go to paychecks, here is a brand new check for the same amount written out to Katie. However, rule is you can't reprint the same exact check for the check number. So here you're just going to assign a different number that happens there. So that is pretty much how you can um, set aside to print a uh, check for Katie or reprint printing in this case for that check. Now, of course, there's also some rules and um, things here now. So now that you print out two checks and we already know that Katie's never going to ever submit that other check, right? Then we're okay, we're safe and we're safe to go. However, the only thing is now that Katie's been written out two checks, right? We have to we have to void a check somewhere just to make sure that we get the money back into our bank account because here, right? Um, I'm gonna click OK and I'm just gonna go ahead and print her a new check. Okay, voucher style, and I'm gonna uh, print it as if um, you know. She's going to get a brand new check. So let me say Katie. Katie reissue check or paycheck. Okay. And then once I printed it out, now look what happened. Here's something that the books look odd now. She, it automatically took out an additional 2000 dollars for this check right well let me let me refresh it so let me click it out and refresh it okay now that i printed out a brand new check for katie she has two of the same exact checks okay uh checking okay and there we have it so katie's been written two paychecks okay so we got uh, so this one actually replaced it, okay? Uh, oh, Mike Mazowski and then Katie, okay? 
So she's got now 60, 71. And basically, it okay, in this case, it recognized that we just reissued her a check. However, where did check number 6069 go? Okay, so once again, um, it already recognized that we're trying to fix that error for her that, okay, hey, um, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to enter in a new check in here with the check that we're missing, right? So then we can prove in our books that we have a, um, a voided check. So in this case, we're going to, we're going to date it exactly how it was. And you're actually going to associate with the exact check number, which was 6069. Okay. Um, and it's going to be just a regular check. Okay. Uh, payee to Katie. Katie Reynolds. Okay. Um, and then um, it's going to say that, hey, are you trying to pay her? Uh, you're going to click okay. Ignore that. So once again, the memo that you're going to write here is reissue um, check. Okay. And what it's going to be for the amount was for the 1814.53. Okay. And then once you validate that, the account, again, it's going to be gross or gross wages because that's what we, um, that's how we calculated the, um, there it is, gross wages, because that's what we used to pay Katie by using um, payroll expense gross wages, okay? So once we've done that, right, and we go ahead and, and um, you can either enter to validate that transaction. Now we've written her a regular check for that 6069, right? This is where we can right click it and click that we're voiding it. So then um, for that check number 6069, it never goes through at all. And this is how you properly um, ensure that you have accuracy of your accounting because once again, when we replaced her paycheck, it automatically associated, hey, I see what you're doing. You're trying to rewrite her another check. So it basically swapped it out. And in order to keep record of this change or this um, thing, you need to make sure that you create that check and then you click that void. So then it appears in your books that check 6069 was a paycheck to Katie, but because she lost it, we have to like make it appear that it's been voided. Okay. So that's the rule there in case you need to reissue a check for any reason. So notice this. Now my uh, account balance is off now. But that's okay because once again, right, uh, Katie is now, she could take this uh, check here. Yes. Okay, she could take this check here and uh, be able to process it in here. There we go. There we go. And now it's back up to 79. So there we voided the check and that's it. Okay. So any questions there? That's just how you modify it so we can reissue her another check. Okay. All right. Now that's not in your book. It should be in your book because that's a very common one that happens all the time. But the one that's in your book is going to talk about editing a check for any reason. So let's say Mike decides to come up to me and say, hey, I'm so sorry, I forgot to tell you um, that I only clocked in half the hours on Friday because I felt sick. So I took half the day off. So therefore, now we have to adjust his paycheck, okay? Now the rule says in your book says that you shouldn't and cannot um, change or modify the information on your check. But again, it doesn't, it also says, but you can still do it. Okay. So once again, we look at Mike, he's only, he's only clocked in 70, 70, 74 hours. No, 70, 70, 76 hours, right? He only did 76 hours because he said he clocked in um, only for half a day on Friday. 
Okay, and he called in sick for the rest of the days. So now we have to go back and we have to modify it. Okay, now how do you edit the information? You have a couple ways to do it, right? So one way is you can locate the check and be able to uh, modify it that way. Second one is going to be, um, you could go to the pay employees. Um, I'll, you're gonna select the pay roll period. So in this case, the 16, right? And down here, you're gonna see it's very, very, very tiny, but it says edit slash void paychecks, okay? So once you click that, you're gonna get this window here that allows you to modify the uh, check itself, all right? And I'm gonna go ahead and click on Mike Mazuki and click edit. So you're gonna get that same exact window that we got to take a look at, right? So this is the second way that you can go to it, right? Third way, which is also one of the things too, to get to that very window, right? To this window, is that you can go up to your um, employees and you can go to uh, payroll, um, uh, payroll or uh, edit and void paychecks right here. You click that, you get to this window right here, okay? So once you get to this one, again, you're gonna click on Mike Mazowski and you're gonna click edit. So same way you could go through the check register itself and just double click on that paycheck and you'd be able to modify it here. So how you change the information, okay? you have to come down to paycheck details. So wherever, any way that you get to this particular window, that is where everything now is the same. So the once you get to here, you're gonna click on that payroll um, detail, okay? And then this is where you can edit all the information that you'd like. Whether, oh, I forgot to enter in the class, right? or I need to modify his check. Now, they say this to you and they don't show you in the book when they should show you in the book. It says that you cannot change anything that's grayed out, okay? Now, if you look at this window, nothing's grayed out. However, let's say I go ahead and try to modify this on my own, right? Saying that, okay, well, if he clocked in half a day on Friday, therefore, he only worked 76 hours. The minute I go ahead and validate that, I'm gonna get an error message saying, hey, you, you have settings in your um, company file that locked up all of your stuff. And no matter how much you wanna change it, the only rule is you can't change the net pay. But once again, it's a setting. So once you said, okay, yes, okay, whatever, I can't change, I can't change it, right? So what it does too is that you have to actually come down, are you, oh, 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 okay, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna close all that. Now, in order for you to actually change it, okay, so I'm gonna put it back to 80, okay, just to show you, okay, once it gives me that, don't ever show this again. Okay, uh, what is this? Hold on. Uh, net pay is locked. Okay, uh, would you like to learn more? Oh, okay, no. So once again, it's telling me I can't change it because the net pay will not balance out. What they don't tell you is that in order for you to modify it, right, they just told you it's a, it's a preference, right? It's a set preference that allows you to lock your paychecks. Simple thing is you just go down here and you're gonna choose to unlock it. Then you're gonna get this huge error message saying, hey, 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 this is just a warning to let you know if you're going to be modifying paychecks like that, you may run into er to, um, errors such as, um, you know, it discrepancies, uneven balances and all the things, whatever, right? And I'm gonna click, okay, it's fine. I understand. I'm gonna change the setting right now because now that I unlocked the net pay, I can modify it and adjust as much as I can. Now let's take a look at this. Let's make sure that our numbers also match too, okay? So my feder my social security is 119. Okay, well let's take a look if I adjust it. So right now I'm at 1920, but let's say he did. 
Um, he did only claim those uh, 76 hours, okay, right? Because he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to tell you that, um, oh, I forgot to tell you that, um, that I only claimed this many hours because I called in sick, uh, the other, the other day. I called in sick and it took half a day off. So here we typed in 76. Once again, tab is your best friend, not enter. And notice it modified my, the total earnings, right? Now he only earned 1824. Now let's take a look. Did it adjust everything else? Here, my social security was 119. Now it's down to 113. So it's automatically adjusting all the numbers for you, okay? And you're modifying the paycheck right then and there. So not quite sure why the book makes you go through all the details just to change only the class, but doesn't teach you actually how to manually or how to actually change the paycheck itself. And this is how you do it, okay? And then once again, when everything looks good, then you could go ahead and click OK. And then now he's got a new paycheck. So you have to do that same idea again because now we have to reissue him another check. And once again, you have to go through the same exact process because now you wrote him a new check. You have to therefore enter in another check to void the previous check before that. So the 60, 70 was the previous one, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and click save and close. Okay, um, you made changes to the transaction. Yes, beep of approval. And that's how you adjust or change the check at time that you released it, right? You can modify it right there. But however, the minute you um, make or create the paycheck, you can't undo it. You can only modify it and that's it. Rule of thumb is you should never void delete at all. You can only edit, okay? Any questions in regards to editing paychecks? Okay, so that one's a little um, harder to understand, but again, it's common. It's a very common mistake that employees do, right? Because again, you can't expect all your employees to um, give you perfect timesheets because again, if you're having them responsible to clock in their own times and to submit their own timesheets in and stuff like that, you just have to, as the HR, right? Again, that's too many people that they have to deal. So you're better off just paying someone else to do the work for you, okay? So um, here, there's only a couple more sections left. So what I'm gonna do is since we're going to end class early, if you guys can sit with me for the next 30 minutes or 40 minutes or so, you guys are free to go from there. But if I can just give you, if I can just do that instead of come from a break and then go do the class and come back and do class for 10 minutes, i rather just go through all of it now. Is that okay with you guys? Okay. Okay, so two more things, right? We got to talk about payroll, uh, paying your liabilities. So here, if I click pay liabilities, right, because I set my um, schedule, right, when we did it yesterday, right, we set that every time we do a federal payment, we did it every quarterly. So in this case, the payroll scheduler allows you to make schedules for your liabilities as well. And here they are. So here it tells me I have two things that are outstanding. I got to pay for the federal um, uh, 941 and 944 and 943. So Social Security, Medicare and all that stuff. I also have to pay for California tax withholdings. Those are going to be due. So what I can do is, if you want to, you can uh, click on one of them, okay? And then click on view slash pay. Simple as that. And that, as you notice this, it tells you the amount automatically. So what this does is, as you write your paycheck, it's collecting all the information, right? We've linked every single account 
And now that every time we charge those accounts, it's going to automatically collect for us. So because we did one chain, and now this is the chain reaction. So therefore, by because we made those pre um, things that we set up earlier, it makes us that easy. Make it it makes it that much easier to uh, just go ahead and click and pay. Okay, and that's how easy it is. You just simply click on it and click view and pay. You're gonna look over the details, and that's it. So that's when we're in the payroll center. Once again, you can access that by going to um, your home page. Click on pay liabilities. You're gonna get to that same exact window. Okay. And same thing too, you could go to the um, employee's uh, menu bar and be able to pay your taxes this way too. Okay. But once again, I'm already here, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that one paycheck that I'm going to write. So this, I'm sorry, not paycheck, check. This one's for the Social Security and Medicare, the federal one. So the 1040, 1041, and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and click view and pay. And like I've mentioned before, you're going to get the same exact check window. And underneath it, it's going to be listed what items you're making your payment for. In this case, like I mentioned before, you got your federal um, income tax withholdings, which is your 940. You got your Medicare and Social Security, which is usually your 941. Okay, so everything looks good here. Um, things that we need to do is it's from directly from your checking account. Um, you have the choice. You can print it later so then you can properly put the um, actual um, uh, check number on there uh, to be printed. So that's what it says right here. It's to be printed. So then next time I'm in my uh, checking or when I print my paycheck or the checks itself, it's going to um, link on a number. So once again, everything looks good, right, to the EF, uh, EFTPS, right, the federal taxation, the electronic federal taxation paid something system. All right, so there it is, right? We just look and verify. Okay, I guess this is what my payment is to the government. And I just click save and close. Get that beep approval. Boom, now it's been moved off of this. Now it gives me this little thing where I can modify it. Once again, you're not going to ever modify it. Uh, you could print the checks now or um, print a summary. I'm going to close this window because I still got to pay my California one. And notice this, because I made a payment, it's moved off my pay scheduler and it's now located down here to for then I can always to uh, look at it again another time. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to pay for this one. Same thing. You click view slash pay and if everything looks good, right, the date looks good, right, then I just go ahead and click save and close. So here I'm paying for California withholdings and California disability, and I click save and close. And once again, it moves off here, and then I get that window that says, do I want to print my checks? Well, now that I have two checks, why not print checks? So then you get that print checks window once again, and it says, hey, you got two che checks. You got one for to the EF uh, TPS, and you have one for the EDD. Okay, and of course we're gonna assign them with the number 60, Um, If you have a separate type of uh, check for your employees, like if you if you set a different um, number, go ahead and make that reference there. But in this case. I'm gonna make sure that I stay here. So once again, I haven't I haven't printed out Mike's check yet. So therefore, the number here is sixty sixty two automatically. So since I'm not gonna uh, pay uh, Mike yet or print out his check, so once again, printing a paycheck is separate from printing a regular check. Okay, two separate windows, but they associate the same exact formatting meaning they look the same, except the only difference is this is, you don't even see Mike's check here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Once again, it needs a signature. And usually for this one, you definitely recommend you to do a uh, voucher style because then it, it prints out the information of 
all the taxes that you've collected so the year to date taxes that you've collected for the checks that you've written out and it will give you all that information and tells you well this is the total amount of checks that you're going to be um, or the amount that you're, you've collected and that's the amount that you're going to um, print again. So once again, I click on that OK print, and then I'm going to say pay roll liability. Abilities check, uh, check. Okay. And I'm going to click save, and then boom. So then again, you can, you'll get this window saying, well, this is what you got. And you can click OK. And then you have the choice. You want to print the summary. If you print the summary, it pretty much tells you, hey, you made a payment to this. Okay, I'm going to do all. Oh, wait, did I say print summary? Okay, oops, cancel. I don't want to print it. But yeah, you can run the report on that. And I'm going to click close. So once again, my payroll scheduler is now scheduled for the next time I need to make a payment. So in this case, I'm making monthly payments when it should be quarterly payments. But this one is a payment to someone else. Okay. All right. So once again, uh, let's see. If I go into my checking account, we're going to notice this now. So it's going to um, categorize that you actually made payments to your liability. So right here, it says pay, um, pay check here. But right here, it says liability check. So already QuickBooks is being really, really smart and organizing your transactions for you without you telling it to do anything. And that's why there's a lot of differences, right? So here's just a regular check, right? You got your manual check up here. And then this one is bill payment, right? If you make a payment to a bill, it's going to associate it for you. Here, we just made um, a payment to a liability, right? We just paid taxes. And then again, right here, we made uh, payments to... Um, our employees so again it keeps the information really organized for, it for you without you having to do anything again you can double click on them just to look at the check if you'd like just to verify it okay so that's how you pay your liabilities you don't have to do anything because it does everything for you all you have to do is just click pay all right any questions in regards to pay roll liabilities Okay. All right. And then the last section we have here is going to be your form. So we talked about this, right? You have to have a higher level of the payroll services. But once again, this section is, I guess you can see as important if you'd like. Again, this helps you file for your 940 or 941 forms. So it helps you file these things for you because once again, QuickBooks is generally used for taxation. So by using the higher payroll service, you are more likely uh, to be able to get more done and a lot quicker. So again, um, this file forms allows you to keep track of your um, you know, uh, taxation when you submit to um, the federal, right? Every time you file your 940 or 941 forms, this is where it can help you create it and even submit it to the IRS for you. So once again, you need to have a higher one. But once again, this is just only important if you um, are seeking to use this to the advantage. But the more uh, important thing about having a payroll ser services is just being able to pay your employees and having the, ca the calculated tax done for you and just properly being able to just pay your liabilities, okay? So that's just the majority of the book there, all right? And last but not least is looking at reports. Once again, reports are only important to you if you are the payroll manager, HR, whatever it is that you are, position that you are in the company is going to be important to you. So once again, if I click on reports, right, and I go to employees, okay, and payroll, 
here are the options that you can have uh, as far as this. You can run your, um, you know, payroll summary reports, right? What, what, what did you pay then this month? Or um, who did you pay, et cetera? Um, you can even do um, information. Like you could even run your uh, workers' compensation uh, summary report. So once again, if you do offer workers' compensation, you can take your look at your payroll liability balances. So making sure that you make your payments on time or, um, or even if I click on that, what do I owe still left remaining? Okay, so as you can see here, I've paid every single one except for this one. Or this is the month that I incurred, right? And did I make a payment to it? Yes, I did. And how much did I collect from it? So again, it's, it's once again, you know, it just depends on the position that you are in. And if it's something that um, you need um, to run if you have a question about the company. So again, I'm not gonna go over the reports. It's in your book if you wanna look at an example. Again, it's only important for the position that you're in, okay? And um, since we got to do payroll yesterday, I got to show you how to do manual payroll. Therefore, that was the section I was supposed to do today. But once again, um, I did it yesterday. So with that being said, any questions in regards to Chapter 11. All right. We're going to go over the review questions, and then you guys can be off for your weekend. Okay, so let me find those questions. Excuse me. So these are the example. Here it is. Review questions for chapter 11. Okay. Question number one says, okay, to properly, uh, oh, sorry, to properly affect the payroll um, items. Okay. Which function, okay, in parentheses, from the employee um, section of the homepage, okay, um, should you use to pay the payroll taxes. D, straightforward, right? If you're gonna pay payroll taxes, payroll pay, pay, pay liabilities. Pretty straightforward. Number two, okay. Okay, voucher style checks, okay, when used is to uh when used to process payroll may contain what? All of the above, correct? Remember, if you use voucher style, what essentially it does is it's your pay stub and then your check is right under it. So your pay stub is going to hold all of this information because that's exactly what the pay stub does. It gives you your, the amount that you got paid for. It gives you all that information on your year-to-date stuff, the taxes that you uh, are being taken out from your paycheck, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so all of the above is correct. Number three, we have here, um, let's see, uh, the, pay, the payroll liabilities balance report um, identifies what? A. Let's see, A, liability um, payments uh, made during the payment period. Hmm. Okay. It does show you that, but that isn't the purpose of the balance report. What does the balance report actually do? Okay, I think we just ran one. So this is the balance report. What does it really do? Is going to be due then if it's 
It shows their liability for damage. Yeah, withholding the deduction. I just don't understand. Okay, let me see. Okay, so that's the, uh, you said D, it is the, um, uh, what is it, the liabilities for um, employer taxes only? Well, let's take a look. Is it only for employer taxes? I think, I believe it's, it's C. C. Liabilities for employee deductions, yeah. Well, let's take a look. Do we have both employer deductions, Medicare for both company and employee? Uh, we have unemployment. Unemployment is a is a company. Federal unemployment is a company liability. Um, this one, uh, right? We have it for. Uh, let me see. We have the Medicare for employee. So this one includes all of it, but here the answer is actually B, because what it does is it gives you an account balance for all payroll items. Okay, for the liabilities at least. Um, all liability payroll items. So once again, this is including everybody, including um, for your co for your company uh, taxes that they have to pay, as well as their employee has to pay. So B is the correct answer for this one. Okay. Number four, number four says here, which statement is true? A, you can print pay subs at any given time. Yes. You can, and the, let's say, let's say B, print um, pay stubs um, two per page. No. Okay. You shouldn't do that. It's a waste of paper. Uh, if, you, um, if you find any erroneous uh, errors on there, um, okay. Uh, wait, can you actually give me like one, like two minutes? Yeah, just two minutes. All right, five says, uh, oh, sorry, to you guys. Uh, so A um, is correct because that's true. You can print your pay stub any time, all right? And then number five says to begin uh, processing your payroll, what do you do? That's the same. C, to select the payroll menu and then select uh, process payroll. Is there an option like that? It's B, isn't it? B, no. select the employee's menu and then select pay scheduled liabilities. Okay, let's try that. Do we have any of that on the menu bar? So employee's menu bar. Is there a schedule, pay scheduled payroll liabilities? I don't see it. Do you guys see it? Okay. It's payroll tax and liabilities. It's payroll tax and liabilities. Okay, so what, what's next? So if, uh, okay, so um, let me see. C is eliminated because that's not what happens on the payroll menu. We don't have a payroll menu bar. We only have an employee's menu bar. So C is already eliminated. Um, the employee's menu, we've already cleared that one out. Can you write a check from the homepage to pay your employees? Um, no, you have to go to... Uh, oh, I need to see the screen. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, right next to Liz. Um, you told us, yeah, right there. Uh, oh, okay. Well, in this case, on the home page yes. Up there on file. Okay, file. Print forms. Print forms, but that's that's but that's we're talking about processing okay. payroll. Oh. Not printing them. Okay. So in this case, you can't write a regular check. You have to use the pay employees option in order to process your payroll. So in this case, the answer is um, D, okay? All right, guys. So um, once again, that was chapter 11. And again, it's a quick, easy read because I was actually supposed to show you how to do the manual payroll today, uh, but we did that yesterday. So uh, with that being said, um, again, thank you for holding uh, those extra couple minutes for me. And you guys are pretty much done for the day. 
So um, have a great weekend. Homework for tonight or not or for this weekend is that you have a journal entry, the last journal, the journal number two, um, on everything that you've learned. It could be from the previous week, now that the concepts are coming in. It could be anything from the exam, all right? Whatever you learned this week, okay? And then uh, read chapter 13. So then Monday, we'll go over uh, chapter 13, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and th Thursday are going to be those study days where we're going to take, we're going to tackle the, the, the test prep questions, maybe go over a couple examples in the book, whatever that you guys need to help prepare you for the exam, okay? Uh, for the certification exam and as well as the exam that is next Thursday, okay? So again, homework this weekend, just the journal and read chapter 13, all right? Other than then, thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Bye, you guys. Have a nice weekend. You too. Yeah, have a good weekend. Okay.